Hello and welcome to this tutorial on converting CSV messages to HL7. Here we've got a basic CSV message, each row representing a single record, and we've been told that we need to convert this across to HL7. For those of you not particularly familiar with HL7, just quickly I have loaded up the HL7 soup editor so that we can see the HL7 message in all its glory. And the HL7 soup editor comes with this list of sample HL7 messages that you can base it on and it provides you with a great place to navigate your message. It shows you where you're clicking, it shows you the list of all the fields and what they represent. I'm going to assume that most likely you've been told to convert it into an existing HL7 message. You'll actually know what that HL7 message looks like. If not, it's probably worth taking a look at some of my other tutorials that show you how an HL7 message is constructed. And so I'm going to base my structure on message 4 of the HL7 soup editor's samples. And we're going to take the sample data from Excel and map those fields one at a time into an HL7 message and we'll spit them out. Now, I could do this with HL7 Soup's receivers for a one-off process, but I really want this to be a long-running workflow, so I'm going to take advantage of Integration Host, and I've just installed this. Both HL7 Soup Integration Host and the HL7 Soup Editor are available to download from the HL7 Soup website, and they both have trials, so you're welcome to follow along and try this out for yourself. Okay, so in this scenario, I've got my C CSV to HL7 directory that I'm hoping to process any files that get dropped in here, which are CSVs. And I've already got a sample file, and I've created a couple of directories as well, which are empty. There's the backup directory. That's whenever I process a CSV file, I want to back it up in case I need reprocessing, and an out directory. And this is the directory I hope to fill up with my HL7 files. So back into integration hosts. I'm going to make this happen, starting by clicking New Workflow. Straight away, it's asking me where do I wish to receive my data from. And so because I want to pick it up from the file system, I'm going to choose a directory scanner, and I'm going to say Get CSV. And I'm going to take my directory, and I'm going to use that as the directory that I'm going to be scanning for the files. Change my file filter across to CSV, and I'm going to have it set on waiting for more files to be added. I don't want it to stop once they've been processed. This is going to be a forever running process. Uh, integration host does run as a Windows server, so it can be a forever running process. Change the message type. I'm picking up CSVs. And now it's going to ask for a message template. This is an indication of what the CSV will look like. And we're going to use that structure to map the CSV to a HL7 message. And so I'm just going to load up my CSV in Notepad. And I'm going to copy out the header row of my message. And I'm going to use that, just paste that in here, and it's detected all the fields and it's listed them all on the right hand side for me to use in my mappings. And because I do have message headers, I don't want it to process the first rows, it is comma separated of course. I was going to move it to a directory once I've finished processing. And so I'll just copy this file path from our backup directory. Okay, so now we've defined the CSV file and how we're going to pick that up. Let's define where it's going to be sent to in the HL7 message. So to do that, I add another step into our workflow, and we set where it's going to go. Now, often with HL7 messages, they are actually sent off as TCP. In this case, I'm going to be writing it out as another file. So I'm going to call this write HL7, and I'm going to put it into the output directory I created. And we need to give it a file name. And I'm just going to call it my hl7.hl7. And so we've specified it's going to write out every single time as the same file name. That would actually add them all into the same file. And we give it this name so that it knows where to write it out. So if we left it as it is, it would just write it out into a big batch file called my hl7. I actually want to separate out my CSV records into separate files. So we need to change this file name for every single row in the CSV. And the easiest way to do that is to just right click in here and say insert variable and say the workflow instance ID. The workflow instance ID is just a number that increments with every new row in the CSV. Granted, it would have also been possible if I had a unique value in the actual CSV file I wish to use, I could take that value and I could have dragged that into my file name and use that is perfect for my needs in this tutorial. If you've got another system that's going to be picking up this file immediately as this process is running, 
it's probably worth then to set up and move file to another directory after processing. That'll allow the file to be picked up only once it's finished processing. But in this case, I'll just leave that unchecked and we choose the message type as HL7. So now we've got to provide a template for it. I'll just delete this. Uh, as I said, you'll probably already have an HL7 message that you can use. But if not, there's a couple of sample ones that do come with integration host. And these ones have some data in them. These are the empty messages, and I'll just choose a, a register a patient one. And you can see here, it's placed in an empty HL7 message for me with just some of the key fields populated. We've got our MSH line, we've got our current date added in in the appropriate format. We've got our workflow instance ID being used as the control. And we've just got a couple of segments. We've got some information about the patient. We've got some information about their next of kin. And we've got some information about a visit. So that can be a great way of building up a message. So I'm going to delete that and pretend that I've just been given one sample HL7 message that I've got to populate. This is pretty common. A lot of systems just give you a sample HL7 message and expect you to find your way to populating that with the data. So that's what I'm going to do. And you can see as I move my mouse across an HL7 message, I get this floating window which tells me where I am in the HL7 message. This is going to be particularly handy for populating the data, but there's only a few things that we're going to have to do. Our incoming data is pretty basic, and yours will probably be pretty basic too, being that it's CSV. So let's just focus on the things that we need to add. So to start with, we're going to alter the date of the message. If I double click on it, right click, and if I insert a variable, I can add the current date time that we're going to be creating this file. We've got an ADTA04, I'll assume that's correct, but you might want to change that to suit, and then yeah, we've got the message control ID. This is incrementing number. And we saw in the blank message, it was already populated. And we're just going to do the same thing by inserting the variable workflow instance ID. We'll ignore these other values other than I do want to leave it as a 2.5.1. And I'll cut the end off it to remove some noise. And just while I remember the current date time, that's going to come through in a standard machine time format. We want this in the HL7 format. I'm just going to right click on it. And I can do this with any date in the system. Just choose format dates and numbers, and I'm going to choose it into the HL7 date formats, and I'm going to give it with seconds. And you can see that that's provided the appropriate format for us. Now we are going to be wanting to populate the patient's information. I don't actually have any next of kin information or any visit information in my CSV, so I'm just going to remove those, and we'll try and simplify the message a little bit. So let's take a closer look at the data we're bringing in. We've got a patient's ID, their first name, their last name, their date of birth, their gender, and their address line one. There's a bit more information that's being provided in this message. And so we're going to tidy it up as we go and only put in the values that we need. So what we're doing is we're creating a template that will be reused with the values stamped into their place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the values that are in the sample with the values from my CSV. And I do that quite simply just by dragging them in from the bindings list and dropping in into the appropriate part of the message. So let's put the ID there. I'm just going to clear those up. I don't need those. You can see my mouse over is telling me this is another patient identifier list. So I'm going to put in the ID here again. I don't have a second ID. Here's the patient's name. I can just drag these fields in. The first name will go to the given name field. My last name will go to the surname field, and I don't have any of the other records, so I'm just going to truncate that down, make it a bit simpler. We certainly don't have any information about the mother's maiden name, but we do have a date of birth field, so I can just drop this in. And again, we're going to want to convert that to an HL7 date format. Through the navigation, and this time I'm just going to choose HL7 date. We don't have any need for the time of birth in the messages. And then we've got the sex or the gender, so I drag that into there and the address line one so we don't have the information on our race we're just going to have a nice simple address and I drop that in and all these other records we don't need for this sample great that's been fully populated and generally speaking that's all we need to do to get it up and running so let's actually test this now and see how it works I'm just going to hit save and close and it's populated integration host. And it started running straight away, but then it stopped and it's shown us a, a quick error. 
I'd normally cut those out of a tutorial, but in this case, it might be helpful to show you what you can do with errors. We do have a log list of every message that's processed by Integration Host. So if I expand this out, I can actually have a look at it and I can see what the error is. In this case, I couldn't deal with the CSV file but because it was being locked by Excel. So I'll just quickly close that to continue. And I'll clear this list now that I had that problem. And I'm just gonna start my process again. And you can see this time it's processed 10 messages and I can refresh my log list. And I can see here that it's been picking up the single lines of CSV one at a time. And it's been converting those into HR7 messages. And it's populated the dates appropriately with the right format. And we've got their name, we've got their date of birth, their gender, and their address. Now, looking at this, I can see two problems with my data. The first is, in HR7, we don't use the word mail. Now, if we look at this message, I can see a few errors with this data that I recognize. I'm just going to copy it out and load it up into HR7 soup to show you. Firstly, we've got mail is not the appropriate value for the gender in an HR7 message. It should be one of these values in the lookup. And also the corner of high and main. This ampersand is actually part of the structure of an HR7 message. And so we've actually divided up corner of high and main into two different fields. It's not valid HR7 to do that. So we're going to have to escape this ampersand and we're going to have to replace the word mail with the appropriate value inside of HR7. Now I happen to have in Excel a list of all the values that I would use inside my CSV file and I have the list of the associated HR7 fields that I'd like to use. And so we're going to create a lookup table inside of Integration Host that will automatically swap out the values from the CSV and replace them with the appropriate HL7 values. So I'm just going to copy this list and we're going to use this in Integration Host. I go back here, I click on the HL7 soup icon to bring up the menu and I'm going to go across to lookup tables. I haven't got any at the moment, so I'm just going to add a new one and I'm going to call it gender. And then in here, it just lists the values that it goes from and then the value should be sent to. I'm just going to paste my Excel list into there and hopefully you can copy and paste back and forth from this screen to Excel. And here we can see all the values and how they should be mapped. There's one more we want to deal with, which is if we don't have a value, I'm just going to put that in as U. We want that to be the unknown value, so I'm going to type that in as well. I say OK, and now we can go back into our designer to have a look at that message. So I'm just double clicking on it, reloads that window, and I head down to where it places it into the HL7 message. And now I just navigate to the gender and I right click on that and I can go into truncate and replace, choose lookup tables, and then inside here we'll see my new gender lookup table that I created. By clicking that, I've now told it to use that lookup table to replace the values. And we wanted to escape the values in the address line one. To do that, all I have to do is right click on the address, go to encoding and then select which type of HL7 encoding I want. A lot of systems do actually want to have double quotes if it's empty, so we'll choose that as well. So now if the address is missing, it'll put in the double quotes and also it's going to escape out that ampersand value with the appropriate HL7 escape characters. So that should be all I have to do. I'm going to save and close it again. And now I'll delete the files that we created last time just for testing. Go up a directory and grab my backup that I'd taken, copy that, and we're going to go back and paste this in again. And as I said, this is going to be an always running process, so watch that 10. Now it's 20. So let's refresh the list. You can now see those messages have been processed. And if I have a look this time, we'll see that our gender has been replaced with female. And on this other message, the male has been replaced with N. And we can see now the address corner of high slash t slash main. That's the escape character for the ampersand in an HL7 message. So now we've got valid HL7 coming out whenever I drop a CSV file into my directory. We've got some great getting started videos to get you up and running with integration host and HL7 soup available on the HL7 soup website under tutorials. And if you found this video helpful, please consider giving us a like, maybe even subscribe to our channel. And if you've got any questions about how to get going with HL7, please drop us a line at the HL7 Super Support site. Thank you.